Welcome back, Luxurious Fleet. In today's news, it's really all about electrification, whether it's fuel cell, drones, wireless charging, and more. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am streaming tonight, QX55 is being unveiled as well as the new Honda Civic. So make sure to stop by back tonight, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. If you're watching this, gosh, what's today's day? The 17th? Yeah, the 17th. If you're watching this on the 17th, make sure to stop by later tonight for that coverage. And let's jump into today's news. Quick hitters today, really. All right. 2021 Toyota Mirai hits dealerships in December with cutting edge technology, enhanced safety features, and multiple grades. This is the vehicle that should have been the next Lexus GS, but they decided to go fuel cell and kind of push technology. Yeah, you guys know how, you get, most of you know how I feel about it. It's beautiful. Elegant 2021 20, Mirai goes on sale in December. It'll be offered in two grades, XLE and Limited. Toyota Safety System 2.5 Plus standard on every Mirai. The only other vehicle that I know that has that technology is the brand new Lexus IS. I shouldn't say brand new, it's refreshed, but it has the newest safety technology on it. Uh, and one of those technologies that makes it a 2.5 over the 2.0 is that if you're on like dynamic radar cruise control and you put your blinker on that you're going to pass, the car starts accelerating before you even leave the lane. So that's kind of cool. Uh, standard 12.3 inch multimedia touchscreen with 14 speaker JBL. Really just, was it five colors? Blue, white, red, uh, kind of a gray and a black. And this is kind of funny, but why are they saying seating for five? Well, the first generation Mirai, the frumpy, ugly crossover looking thing had only seating for four because the fuel cells were taking up so much room. Well. This vehicle has a lot more capacity. I think it's about 30% more capacity uh, for the fuel cells. And it also gives you more space. Uh, I believe it's also around 400 miles of range. Every grade comes standard with the larger screen. Well, I should say the only screen, but it's large. It's a 12.3. Uh, why do I say larger? Because they have that same screen in the Lexus RX. And that is not the standard screen. You only get that in the navigation package and above. Of course, Apple CarPlay, Amazon uh, Alexa, and Android Auto standard. Behind the steering wheel is an 8-inch TFT LCD for the, for the speedometer, drive mode, fuel efficiency, etc. XLE gets dual climate control, heated front seats, manual rear seat sh sun, sun shades, and power folding mirrors with puddle lights. Limited grade gives you the heads up display, heated and ventilated front and rear seats. Holy cow. That's probably the biggest surprise for me. Ventilated rear seats is rare. Okay. The only vehicles that I can think of in the Toyota Lexus world that has ventilated rear seats is the Lexus LX and the Lexus LS. That's pretty, that's pretty next level there. A rear touchscreen, a control panel with the climate control function. Rear sunshade toggle audio controls. So the back to me is like a, a like LS quality. You have rear sunshades. You have a touchscreen back there to control the climate. Uh, you have rear ventilated seats. The only thing missing that's not an LS would be like reclining and massage function seats. But that's only found on the executive package of the LS, which is like 120 grand. So let's keep reading. Of course, it has in the limited the bird's eye camera, and it is still an option on the LA XLE. And lastly, on the limited, they get intelligent park assist and dual fixed panoramic moonroof with power sliding shade. I'm not going to bore you talking about the safety systems. Just know that they're really, really good. All XLE grades feature soft text, heated seats with gray stitching, blah, blah, blah. So the limited grades give you a choice of black and white, heat and ventilated, perforated soft text. So no leather, no leather, which soft text and Lexus's version of Nulux is getting so good and that lasts longer, it doesn't crack, it doesn't crease. But very interestingly, as I finish up reading through this, there's no mention of the powertrain. Uh, there's no mention of pricing that I can see in this press release. I would expect pricing to be very high. The current Mirai is about 60 grand. No shame, I had to look that up. So I would expect this one to be minimum 60 grand. If they're packing that, so, that much luxury in there. Now keep in mind, this is a fuel cell vehicle. There's not going to be any availability for this vehicle outside of California, more than likely. I know there's maybe, I think there's one in Hawaii. Uh, you guys always get on me about 
forgetting Hawaii has one. I think there might be one on the East Coast as well. Uh, this vehicle I could see becoming a hit in Germany. I think they have a lot of fuel cell over there. Uh, and it could be popular in Japan. Of course, it'll be popular in Japan. So stay tuned as hopefully we get more information on pricing, uh, more information on the powertrain. I'm expecting about 400 miles of range. Over the Toyota New Europe newsroom, Toyota further expands electric, fully electric, not fuel cell, not hybrid, with new ProAce Verso electric vans. Holy cow, all electric range of people carriers. We have 50 and 75 uh, kilowatt hour lithium ion battery op options with driving range up to 330 uh, kilometers as WLTP covered by a year 160 kilometer warranty. Well, 330 kilometers WLTP is probably something like full 50 kilowatt hour battery charge possible in about 30 minutes. That's, that's not bad. Model range include compact, medium, and long body lengths with combi, combi, shuttle, family, and VIP versions seating up to nine and covering full spectrum of customer needs for business fleet and private use. I'm telling you what, guys, if this was available in America, I would think about it. We just got the hybrid Sienna here, and that was like a leap forward for them. Now we have a fully electric, in Europe anyways, a fully electric van. That would be cool. It would be really cool. I'd love to have one for the family, take the kids around a fully electric vehicle. It would cover all the range on a daily basis for just running the kids around. I would love to have something like this. Okay. It's only a matter of time before this eventually comes to America, but I think in, an, in all honesty, it's not going to be here for probably like 10 more years. Uh, Toyota patent shows self-driving drone tankers for car-to-car -car recharging and refueling. Um, this is one of the most ridiculous patents <laughs> I've ever seen. We're over at the drive. This is essentially like a airline refueler coming to refuel a uh, fighter jet midair. Um, could you imagine the clutter on the streets that this mule recharging vehicle just taking over the streets to recharge vehicles while they're moving around? It's preposterous. But Toyota's like, hey, there could be a future world that, where this is a thing. So they patented it. It can refuel fuel cell, uh, electric batteries as well. So yeah, take it with a grain of salt, but they're they're just getting their foot in the door if anything like this ever comes close to happening. All right, over at the car connection, Toyota expands fuel pump recall to one and a half newer Toyota and Lexus cars. So Toyota is expanding the scope of the fuel pump recall it initiated earlier this year with an additional one and a half million newer Toyota and Lexus vehicles. That brings a total number of vehicles recalled since January to 2.7 million vehicles. Oh my gosh, this Denso. So Denso is Toyota's supplier. They own, I think it's like 51% of Denso, okay? And it used to be fully owned by Toyota, but they spun it off, okay? So it's more of like a joint venture uh, company. But yeah, it's, it's effectively Toyota's part maker. Fuel pump contains impellers of lower density that supply pressure to the fuel injection system. But the faulty impellers can crack and eventually degrade the fuel pump. Owners of affected vehicles may notice a check engine light or other illuminated indicators. The engine can run uh, roughly, not start or stall at low speed. Toyota said in rare instances, the car could stall at higher speeds of vehicle stalling uh, increases the risk of a crash. So yeah, better safe than sorry. Holy cow, that fuel pump issue is this is going to go down in history as one of the largest recalls ever, I feel like. It's just incredible. Uh, over at Honda's newsroom, they're patting themselves on the back a little bit here. Honda E becomes first Japanese vehicle to win German car of the year. Adds to glowing, uh, sorry, <laughs> growing tally of global accolades. Uh, but the irony of this is, is as they're still not selling enough vehicles uh, in Europe. Uh, to not pay penalties and fines. So even though the Honda E is well received, don't know how well it's selling, they still had to pay Tesla this month uh, ridiculous amounts of money. So they avoided fees and other things from European emissions regulation companies or legislations, governments. Governments are companies really, right? Yeah, just a different kind of company. All right, moving forward though, new electric Genesis models will offer wireless charging. This is over at CarBuzz. Uh, this is pretty crazy. Genesis will be the first automaker in the industry to commercialize EV wireless charging 
on a production vehicle. A BMW offers similar technology, but only as a pilot program. Technology was here developed uh, by Y Tri City, a leader in wireless charging technology. Don't know how I feel about it. It's a little scary to think about uh, all those gigahertz, gigahertz, megahertz of energy flowing through the air. Uh, it already freaks me out that we have enough 5G and Bluetooth and you know wire all this wireless technology now. All these wireless charging vehicles is just going to be it's going to be here before we know it. Wireless charging vehicles. I mean Toyota. Uh, slash Lexus thinks this is going to be widely available in 2030. They put it on their concept, the LF30, LF30 concept, uh, fully electric vehicle. So it is coming. I don't know how useful it is here in America. We're not going to have wireless charging for a long time. And the infrastructure here is terrible uh, for electric vehicles. Just the electric grid here is bad. So as we get more and more vehicles on the grid, uh, yeah, we got to find better ways to supply the vehicles. Solar needs to get better. Wind energy needs to be more widely available, I guess. I don't know. Guys, I'm not here to talk about what energy sources are better than others. Ideally, fully sustainable, but there are pros and cons to every single energy source out there. So, guys, I will see you guys in the comments. Lots of news today. Pretty much all electric. I don't know where, why. Why? It's not like I've purposely chose fully electric news today that's just what was available and i thought it was pretty exciting uh the mirai is going to be coming all right i'm excited about it but yeah I, well, i'll never get a chance to to drive a mirai anytime soon until they become actually usable in most places so that's going to be a while but guys i'll see you in the live stream tonight make sure to smash the like button if you haven't already subscribe if you're not we got a lot of news a lot of exciting products being revealed and uh teased before the end of the year and i'll see you in the live stream tonight 7 30 p.m central standard time uh, qx55 reveal will be first and then the honda civic will be right after that so uh, i'll see you guys later have a good day take care of yourselves and <laughs> peace out